that was unexpected. Even for a remake nobody asked for, it's still amazing how badly it turned out. I don't think I've ever seen ads anywhere. Icons probably were aware that the game is not very good, to say the least, so decided to minimize the losses, I guess. This disaster pushed me finally to try the original 13 or classic as it's known now. Throughout the years, I've heard people praising the game, labeling it as a hidden gem, something you should play. However, lately, all this was toned down with people pointing out the flaws of the game, but still saying it's a good game. What do I think about it? Well, it's alright. That's it. And to be honest, it's kind of forgettable. It isn't a game that will stay with me. In a conversation, I may say, oh yeah, I play that, but nothing more. There is one thing that I will definitely remember, and what most people do, the art style. But let's continue with the story, shall we? The game starts with the assassination of the US president and the mysterious people getting tattooed a Roman numeral. The FBI starts investigating, but it stumbles because the evidence is lacking. On the streets, the president's brother, O'Reilly, claims he will continue his work. In the headquarters of the FBI, General Carrington is frustrated with the lack of progress and states he will conduct his own investigation. In a dark and hidden room somewhere, a group of conspirators are preparing to launch a massive operation of some kind. In a sunny evening or morning, on Brighton Beach, a lifeguard finds a shot person, the player character. She carries the mysterious man to her post and helps him. He suffers from amnesia and the only clue that might help him is a key for a safe box in a bank he carries and has a 13 tattoo on him. However, just as he starts to feel a bit better, the cabin is attacked by mercenaries, the lifeguard killed and now they are onto you. From here you slowly discover what is going on, who are you and why people want you dead. The story is fine, if you like conspiracies, you are going to like this one. It reminds me, partially, of Jason Bourne. This is the closest as a comparison I can think of. They kinda start similarly. I'm actually aware who is the bad guy, who orchestrated everything, but not from the comic books or a video on YouTube. I don't know how many of you are aware, but in 2008 was released 13, The Conspiracy, a 3 hour TV miniseries with Stephen Dorr as 13, and 2 years later a TV show called 13 with Stuart Townsend. If my memory serves me correctly, the miniseries is pretty good. However, it's an interpretation of the comic books, so keep that in mind if you decide to watch it. I don't know if it still holds up. Anyways, what I dislike is the pacing of the story. I find it too slow. Early on, there is a cutscene where 13 asks a person who got all the intel on him to explain what is going on and who is he, and that person brushed it off with there is no time. Then both of them get on a helicopter to travel and you don't have time? This bothers me. 13 is amnesia, tell him what he needs to know, it's like you are torturing him. Also I had no sound in 3 cutscenes, I don't know why. I know I could see them on YouTube but I'm not going to stop playing just for that. But the worst thing about the story is it's never finished. This was supposed to be the first part of a trilogy but they were cast to do low sales so the best way to experience it might be the comic books. So is it even worth experience 13 just for the gameplay then, knowing that the story is not finished? With few words, it's just ok. With more than few words, if you skip this one, you won't miss much in my humble opinion. And I will explain why. So all the weapons have a light recoil and a different spread. They all feel fine, just ok. I have some favorites, but they are based on how useful I found them. You never have in your arsenal more than 5 or 6 and often they'll change between levels. The weapons are your standard arsenal and that's fine, nothing wrong with that. However, I have some beef with them, mainly with the AK-47. It's very inaccurate at a long distance, the shotgun and Uzis are better in almost all cases. There is one section where you are in a cabin in the woods surrounded by enemies and you have to fend them off for some time until you are allowed to escape. I was with a revolver, pump action shotgun, Uzi and double barrel shotgun. Some enemies are trying to enter the cabin, others shoot you from the hill with AKs and RPGs. I didn't have a lot of ammo for the revolver, so when it finished, I had to rely on the AK left from dead enemies in front of the cabin. Trying to kill the distant enemies was not fun. I eventually dealt with most of them after several tries using the shotgun and Uzi. After that point, the AK was mostly for medium and close range. The pump action is really good. It was one of my go-to weapons, especially in close quarters, but you have to be careful. The reload animation is slow for my liking, so for more than 2-3 enemies in one room might not be ideal. You can take a lot of damage if your shots are not on target. One of the weapons you probably use often in the earlier levels is the revolver. It's a beast. In the game, a headshot 
means certain death to enemies and the revolver guarantees that. What I found funny is the other pistol. You need to shoot enemies twice in the head to kill them. In general it does less damage and in later levels filled with armored enemies I used it because there isn't much of an option until I realized how to exploit the AI. The rest of the weapons are fine, they are what you expect, but 13 included the best stealth weapon of all time, a throwing knife, I love it. It's so unusual and great fit for a sneaking on enemies, and it's better than a Samus pistol. Also any game that lets me use a bow or a crossbow have my immediate approval. Speaking of stealth, it's the other part of the game. Most of the levels you start by sneaking behind enemy lines without raising alarm, that part is fine. What I realized just now is that there isn't a big density of enemies guarding, so with little patience and observing the walking patterns you can get rid of most of the guards without an issue. You can actually knock out NPCs with chairs, bottles, ashtrays, etc. I don't think there is any other game that allows you to do that, might be wrong though. That is if you want to be sneaky. It took me more time than I'm willing to admit, but the enemy AI is easily exploitable. When an NPC sees you, they don't immediately run and raise the alarm. It takes them a couple of seconds to react, which gives you time to deal with them even if you have to be noisy. I don't hold it against the game, it's a product of its time. It's not an instant failure, which is good. What I found in the second half of the game is if a body is not seen, you can shoot the enemies with whatever weapon you want. I certainly abused this, I'm not 100% sure if this is the case in all levels, but it was certainly a thing on a lot of levels. The AI just doesn't react to sound. And that's the issue with the stealth system, most of the time you don't need to use it, you can just blast the enemies. With how infrequent checkpoints are, I will abuse the AI. Speaking of checkpoints, they are infrequent, so expect to repeat the big sessions of the game, especially on higher difficulties. Now there is one point where the game can be soft locked. And I did it. After a boss fight you have to take care of a person. Now I got distracted for a second, I didn't read what was on the screen. So I continue on my way, a door closed behind, I killed everyone and I couldn't continue. I have to check on YouTube what to do, turns out I have to carry the person with me. I have no idea why the game is programmed like that. It shouldn't let you continue if you don't carry the person. This made me repeat the whole level from the beginning and it was very annoying. Enemies are okay, they have their patrolling routes and if they notice a body you didn't move or you, they start shooting or run to ring the alarm. They use the same weapon as you and sometimes they can be accurate, but sometimes. They can miss at close range quite shockingly. However, if they notice you, their trigger is fast. Bosses are just bullet sponges that deal a lot of damage. There isn't much of a strategy, shoot and try to hide behind an object, they are forgettable. However, the final boss is just plain bad, I hate him. He can kill you extremely fast. The idea of how you fight him is interesting but it's executed poorly. The arena is around several nukes and you're supposed to shoot the rocket so the gas that comes out can stun him. It is difficult to avoid taking damage. He can show from any side and as soon as you see him you already have taken damage. It's very annoying and anticlimactic. Let's talk about the thing that most people remember about this game. The art style. Everything is hyper stylized to look like a comic book. Cell shading gives the characters and environments more distinct and memorable look but there is more. When something explodes near you, a comic book panel starts shaking. You can see the footsteps of everyone. When the enemy is walking there is a tap letters popping up. The bigger they are, the closer he is and vice versa. Doing hit shots makes three panels pop up revealing where exactly you hit him. I'm not going to list everything. As much as I like the art style, sometimes it gets on your way. Those three panels I talked about can obscure your vision and with a lot of enemies can be annoying. On one level, panel bugs out and stays on the screen until I dispatch all guards. The levels are linear with little exploration. I wouldn't mind some to be more open, but it is what it is. Visually they are quite diverse. Buildings, forest, asylum, military base, etc. They all play almost the same. Sneak after story development shoot and you often have to backtrack. Those that you do it are not big enough to feel annoying. My favorite is the canyon. It's narrow, enemies are on a higher position, you have a sniper rifle and I love when I have a chance to use it. Also you get a lot of ammo for the RPG. You can blow everyone to pieces or damage yourself, most likely both. Sound is pretty good. The effects nowadays can feel pulled from a stock library but they do the job even if they are. Voice acting is also good. There are some notable stars pulled to work on this project. If Adam West and of course David Duchovny as 13. This was the period where you can hear his voice in a couple of games. All are doing great job but David Duchovny feels like miscast. He has very few lines but I can't see him as 13. 
voice and face don't match up in my eyes. What is an absolute killer is the soundtrack. A mix of jazz, funk, soul that captured the essence of the comic books and the game. There was one point when the game was pulled from digital stores. I got it just before that and also I have a physical copy. Now that it's back, I'm not entirely sure if it's worth it. The good news is, it doesn't cost much and it's often on sale and in bundles, but you have to tinker with it to play it in 60x9. It's a relatively painless process. However, is it worth it? The stealth is fine. Shooting is ok at best, there is some balancing issues with some of the weapons, it ends on a cliffhanger, Micro has killed any chance for a sequel and if you remove the thing that most people remember, the art style, you end up with a bargain bin game. All this is absolutely fine if only it has something memorable to offer, sadly I didn't find any.